the one and only, the founder, the inspo, the driver of change, Christian Robertson, actor, director, producer. I mean, thank you. I'm just honored to be here with you. Hey, Amen. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm here with you. I'm a humble soul. What's up? How you feeling? I feel blessed and highly favored. I feel grateful. I feel present. I feel focused. I feel driven. Oh my goodness. That's how I feel. He didn't even say that much right now, and we all just just feel blessed. That's how I feel. Did you feel blessed? What is going on? I mean, we're here on pass, a line that was written and scripted by you. Like, like, like what? Like what? What, uh, what, is, what are we doing? I, 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 I was tasked by the Most High. I was tasked by God to do this. Yeah. He told me a long time ago to put together a program that would essentially give information on how to attack a process that's vague, it's intricate, it's chaotic, it's beautiful, you know? And a lot of people need help and a lot of people don't know where to go from help. So that leads to a lot of people being taken advantage of because they don't have the adequate knowledge or resources, information to achieve their dreams, and you know? It's, it doesn't hurt to give information. You know, those who are fearful of giving information more often than not are fearful of losing their spot. Mm. So I think it, it, it's pretty cool what God tasked me to do. And uh, for those that don't know, PATH stands for Provoking Artists Through Honest Steps, where the entire premise of it is bringing a person from behind the camera and bringing a person from in front of the camera to essentially shed a light in a, in a very positive way yeah. on all aspects of the entertainment industry and how to properly navigate that from people in these spots. I'm not saying I know everything by any means. I'm saying I know the people that do, though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think it would behoove the next generation and the, the young adolescent teens and young people in inner city urban environments to get this knowledge. You know, I think it would it could help save their life. It could help them make a better decision when, when they're at a pivotal point and they're like, should I go this way or should I go that way? And I'm simply giving them the option to look in another direction. Yeah. Or assisting in that. So where were you when when you got this calling? Where were you on your path? Like, was it like, I, you had, you know, nothing to do and it came, or were you focused on something completely different and, and this, this, uh, this, this legendary piece of art, like this movement came upon you? Genuinely, I remember where I was Physically, like in the moment, I I was at the very beginning of my path, honestly. I was living in Atlanta. I was in my apartment. And it was a time where I didn't know what to do. And I was just sitting in my living room. And it just hit me. Like, you know when God is tapping you on the shoulder. So, and a lot of times we ignore the voice from heaven because we don't necessarily want to do what God has tasked us to do. Yeah. For this one, I didn't run from it. It was more so, uh, well, how? How am I going to do that? <laughs> I don't know nobody. <laughs> like, I don't know a soul. So I was just like, I'll do it. I'll happily do it. You know. And But it, as far as where I was in a metaphoric state, in my path. I was at the beginning. I had just moved to Atlanta and I didn't know where to go, what to do. And it was a pretty much whatever's available, I'm there. If I see an open door, I was running in it. Yeah. But that could often lead to your detriment more than it can assist or, or help you get to where you want to go. Because a lot of people scam people out of their dreams or, you know, make themselves seem much bigger than what they are in reality. And it takes a lot of due diligence and research to avoid those speed bumps and yeah. headaches and eventually bounce back. But who wants to go through that, you know? Yeah. So <clears throat> for me, I was at a point of figuring it out still. 
and I was in a I was in an acting class, but even getting in an acting class doesn't necessarily propel you to being an actor. It prepares you for being an actor, yeah. but it, it 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 doesn't provide all the aspects of it. You're honing it, you're honing your craft, but you reach a point where you're you're constantly honing it and and doing what you feel like is necessary to become the best at what you do rather than fully just jumping out the window. Mm-hmm. But when you're when you're in that space, there's a frustration that comes with with yourself and with the 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 next steps in your path because you don't necessarily know what to do. And in that frustration, anything can happen. So I'd much rather give people an inside look from people that have walked the path of where they like to be just to share the knowledge of how they did it. Now, by all means, when you're walking on your path, things will come to you that are meant for you. But there's a way you can start and we can guide people to, hey, make sure you do this. Hey, stay away from this. Don't go over there to those people. Those people will harm you. Those people will take from you. These people over here will guide you and provide you the proper things. And these are the respected people. And these are the people that are accepted. And and you can get into the door in, in many different ways. That's why it's passed because the beautiful thing and the beautiful thing about all of this is that in my entire journey, I've yet to hear the same story twice. Oh, wow. Nobody has the same story of how they got to their seat and they end up in the same destination. And that's what the beauty of paths is. I can have a hundred actors up here tell you how they got to where they are and you will not hear the same story twice. Same thing for directors, same thing for producers, (laughs) same thing for casting directors, same thing for writers, same thing for lighting, sound, DP, AD, production coordinators, et cetera. No one will have the same path. And I think the beauty of dropping that gem onto the youth that look to us is priceless because they'll begin following a path of someone they admire and then eventually their beautiful path that God created for them will start to blossom. Yeah, and you never know, their path may lead them to be another special guest on paths. I <laughs> hope so. Right, and it's those Same. stories that's gonna happen, right? They're gonna watch paths, they're gonna watch something that was a vision, a calling of yours that you you jumped out and did. Mm-hmm. And then they too are gonna open up doors for other people. I mean, this is pure activism in, in almost like a, an artistic format and almost like a, a belief format, right? You believed that when you put paths together, it was going to do um, what it's intended to do, which is open the gateway into some of these stories that we otherwise would not hear. 100%. Even if it's just one person at a time. Yeah. Slowly, like if I could help one person or help a person avoid any of the pitfalls that I experienced. Yeah. I think I'm doing my job. And then that goes for every single guest sitting in this seat. If they, hey, avoid as many headaches as possible, you know? Yeah. But now, because here's the flip side of the coin to that. Sometimes headaches help because okay. the lessons you learned in your pain will make you stronger for a decision you have to make in your future. So there's a balance to it. But if I could help you avoid 90% of the headaches, I think I did my job. <laughs> one less. One less. All we need is one. One volunteer, one person. No. Anybody. <laughs> so could you talk about one of those moments where where maybe you yourself were in a low low moment? You had a low moment in your career. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pick, pick a year. <laughs> no, so I've I've I would say the two most uh no, I'll give you the I'll give you the one. The 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 most effective one for me was after my career shot up, it dropped like a crypto coin. <laughs> my career went pew. Elon was like, nope, no more. Yeah, Elon <laughs> SNL'd me. It was doing drop crazy and I had to build it back up, but that and, and, I, and I promise you, I am so grateful for that low point yeah. because what happened was I was booking a lot of TV shows, a lot of movies. I was in all the events. Oh I was in all these spaces. I was 
uh, well respected by the people in positions of power to open doors and I was doing amazing work and everything and it like slowly dwindled you know and in that dwindling it was a beautiful lesson to learn because I kept getting close and then things wouldn't happen or then it was just like it was just a constant no 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 but I think there's so much beautiful art in the word no because that makes you genuinely take a look in the mirror it makes you genuinely take a look up it makes you genuinely take a look to your left and to your right because now you're like okay if I'm meant to be in this space and I know in my heart I'm meant to be in the space that God told me I was meant to be because I've seen it since I was a child I've, I've literally seen what my life is supposed to look like since I was a, a kid as far back memories as I can remember. So yeah. I'm not going to stop until I see it in this physical realm here. Yeah. So it's like, okay, on this journey, on this path, what exactly do you want me to do, God? What is there? Is there? My pastor said one time, it was such a beautiful, he said, God doesn't have you in the wilderness for nothing. Hmm. learn something while you're there if you're in the wilderness you cold you shivering you like what's going on it's dark you gotta learn how to start a fire yeah. you gotta learn how to build a hammock and build shelter and, and, and the beautiful part of being in the wilderness is the creativity that comes out of it the adapting that comes out of it the drive that comes out of it the honing of your craft more and more and more and the genuine firing passion that builds from being in the wilderness is such a beautiful experience and now I'm on fire. <laughs> I'm outside. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all so, pull up. 100%. And now, you know, the waves will sway how they may, but I feel like I have a much better grip on things. And I think the low point that I experienced, which was nothing detrimental, like I didn't, I never missed a meal. My bills were always paid. Yeah. It was, it was more so uh, what's happening up here in the, in the dream scope of, of exactly what I like to do. That was, it was cloudy for a second. And I think, you know, looking around and changing things and cutting dead weight and, and the desire to become my best self and actively doing the work for that has propelled me back to where I'd like to be. Yeah. Which is a small percentage of what I see I'm going to be. Ah! Mm. Yeah. To walk with that level of vision and insight on your life is like, like, like <laughs> true glory. You're, you're gifted. You're gifted Thank in you. that. And and I'm I'm even more so curious, right? When when you say being in the wilderness, mm -hmm. what, what did that look like? What did that feel like? I mean, it's like I, I give this analogy, and I uh, like I'll be like, God, I hope you're not mad at me when I use this analogy, <laughs> <clears throat> like because imagine everything you've ever prayed for, mm -hmm. everything you've ever desired. Yeah. happening imagine you taking a day to walk around in heaven right imagine you taking a day to walk around in heaven you see the gold paved roads you see the clouds you see all the beautiful things we could imagine what heaven would look like and then all right get out <laughs> the door. it's been real i holler be like hey Back. Yo, <laughs> straight up, Jesus, it's me. You remember? No, so that's what that looked like, honestly. And it's like a wow, this is interesting, you know. And there's there's blood, sweat, and tears in that process. There's a lot that, that happens in that mentally, spiritually, emotionally relationship wise with peers family friends etc so that will make you or break you it's like you're either gonna fold you're either gonna pack the bag and go home or you're gonna stand tall and figure it out yeah. you know and it's like i'd rather die than go home 
That's the kind of passion you gotta have. I'd rather. It, one of my favorite quotes is from 300 where uh, the queen, I forget her name, told Leonidas, come back with your shield or on it. Meaning come back with the victory or die out there. Yeah. And that's how I feel. Like, so mentally, I think about it like, all right, it's not over. It's a pause. It's a yeah. your delay is not a denial. It's, yeah. it's back to the wilderness to figure it out. So what does one do? OK, I'm going to train with a teacher I didn't train with before. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get more active in, in the gym. I'm going to read the Bible a lot more. I'm going to be clear a lot more. I'm going to uh, be more disciplined. And so little things like this just provides little little clarity, just like God's trying to get your attention. Yeah. Because just like a parent, if, if their child is being disobedient, I'm gonna take that game away. <laughs> you go, you ain't can't go play basketball. You, so it's like God was like, right, I'll just take this away until you start listening to what I'm telling you. And slowly but surely, I started listening. I don't want to go back. It's cold out there, God. Oh, I'm in the house. We, I'm all ears. What you need me to do? I mean, you and I'm doing it. Broke it down, right? The, mm. the meltdown, the climb back, the big the, climb. Back. What you needed to do? Yeah, the big, big the big back. back. <laughs> I'm mm. back. Like studying the word, put letting go of certain things Absolutely. that you didn't see a value or importance anymore in your life. Mm -hmm. Trying new routes, Mm -hmm. trying things differently, approaching things differently, right? So so before you even got there, what were those maybe three affirmations that you said to yourself that was like, hey, I know this is not it. Let me be honest with you. I don't really do the whole affirmation (laughs) thing. I don't really do it. I'm not gonna- Was it a friend or a mentor? Cap. That's what the kids say the other day. No, I no, I don't. I don't do the affirmation things. I pray a lot. Yeah. I this is what I do do. Okay. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> uh, I start every single morning off with a gospel song. Love it. It's the first thing I do when I wake up. I play a gospel song and I thank God for waking me up in the morning. And before I go to sleep at night, I say my prayers and I read a Bible verse. That's what I do to keep me <clears throat> start my day and end my day with the most high. And I honestly pray more than like any human walking this earth. I'll be walking down the block, shoot a quick right. prayer up, or laugh and joke with God. I joke with God a lot too. I'm like, oh, you really just gonna let that happen? Like, how you <laughs> like, I joke, like, so it's a constant relationship with the most high for me, yeah, as opposed to affirmations. And I don't knock anyone that does do it, yeah. you know, because I have some very good people who do do it that I'm very close to. It's just that that isn't particularly my walk in life. I'm not saying certain things to make me feel certain ways. Well, you know I gotta ask, because you kind of open the window. Talk to me. So, what gospel songs you playing? Never would have made it. The remix, the remix. No, y'all just y'all just put me on to that. Um, I listened to Donnie McClurklin, um, Lord, I lift your name on high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord, I love you. Hey, you know, so I'm so glad you're my life. But but that I listened to Forever Jones, he wants it all. I love that song. Uh, the Upper Room, Open the Scroll. I listen to, oh, this, I love this song. Um, the Voice of God. I forget who sings it, but, uh, oh, Tasha Cobbs. Uh, for Your <laughs> Glory. Do Don't she do it? For Your Glory. Right for Your Glory. Jesus, for your glory. You didn't even do it, you driving to work. <laughs> I will do anything. No, I love that song. So those those are those are some of my favorite gospel songs. Oh no, that's mm. beautiful. G- I'm so sorry. I knew it. For anyone who needs a motivational song when you're going through a dark time, there's a song, I forget the um the artist that made the song. And it's an old school, beautiful gospel song. And it's called oh hold my hand yeah. Lord, yeah, yeah. while i run this race it's yeah. a beautiful song so find that <laughs> type in what i just said you'll find it and 
We gotta run it back. Hold my hand. Nah, I want it raw. Oh, okay. I want it. We gonna give the people what, what they, they came you know see. for real. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. Hold my hand, Lord, while I run this race. It'll. It. It's a beautiful song. When you first check hear it, it out. On a prayer line that my family has. Oh, we need yeah. to know. We need to know. What is, a prayer, prayer line that your family yeah, has? My family does a prayer line every Tuesday and Thursday. And sometimes, and I feel bad, sometimes I'm too busy to get on it. Like, I'll be on set and I can't. But when I do catch it, I do catch it. And and we'll have, you know, a sermon. And we'll have people will say things. And people will sing. And the first time I heard I was like, all these years, I never heard this song. This song what song was that that she was singing? And I asked my mom, and she told me. And I looked it up. And I, it, was, it was just so beautiful. Because one of the most uh, powerful statements in the song is when they say, uh, I don't want to run this race in vain. Yeah. That did something to me. It's like, I'm doing all this work because it, I think this is what you're telling me to do, yeah. God, but I hope I'm hearing you clearly and give me the strength to run this race when it gets weary. That's, yeah. that's what I took from that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting kind of glossy eyed. You can't, you can't. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm, trying to, to I'm like, yo, yo. Uh, you know. can't be doing yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, talk hey, like, hey, talk hey, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's happening now for you? What does life look like today? What's life, going on? Life is looking like God is smiling at me. Ooh. That's That's what life is looking like these days. I am acting... By the time this come out, I'll probably be in a very, very fish grease hot show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. I um, I'm creating now. Yeah. I love creating. I don't like being. You can do this. You cannot. I'll pick you for this. I. What are you talking? About? <laughs> no, bro. Who you, who you That's talk, that right? That's no, that it gotta be because <laughs> I mean, like. All right. So I just go create my own. Yeah. So, and that's what, but it's lessons you learn on your path. It's like, oh, yeah. this is how this works. Okay. So I'm going to create my own ideas. And that's not a knock to anyone else's ideas. Yeah. It's just that I think these would be cool, dope things to, to have out in the world for people to lay their eyes on. And yeah. that's what life's look, life looks for me. Yeah, that. that's what it looks like for you right now on your path. <laughs> He's on his path, okay? We're cutting that part. Sometimes we skip. We're going to cut that Hop, part. Hop, jump, <laughs> jump on over it. That is what life <laughs> looks like for me right now. <laughs> it, I'm in a very, I'm in such a creative bubble, a creative pocket, yeah. whether it be acting, writing, producing. I just want everything in this beautiful mind of mine to get out. Yeah. That's what life looks like for me right now. Pure ball of drive and passion. Who is one person that was put in your path that that influences you or really like God? I don't want to say guides you, but mm -hmm. that you look up to outside of the Lord our Savior. Amen. But like somebody whose path you're put in. Like I can say for my path, mm -hmm. you were put in my path. Hands down. Hands down. Oh, this is my first time doing this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got a girl feeling like Oprah Winfrey or you're something. You're doing an amazing but like, job. What? Like, who is that person that you feel like was a mentor, sponsor, champion of yours? I have a few. Uh, one of the first people would be Hakeem Callender. Okay. He, at the beginning of my career, man, an emergency break the glass for me. <laughs> Bro, I need, I don't know, how do you, how do you, how do you? He helped me a lot. Yeah. But a lot of people don't have that person, which is why paths are so important. Yeah. Because it. I was fortunate and blessed for someone like him. He helped me from what it means to obtain representation to the importance of a headshot to how to edit an audition. Things that are vital to your path to becoming an actor specifically, I was able to call him and, and get a lot of answers from him. But 90% of people on this path don't have that person or those resources or the know-how. So he's 100% a person I would love to give 
him his flowers, man. Al Mitchell, who's an incredible actor who's helped me tremendously in more ways than one. Victor Love, Tasha Smith. <laughs> Yo, I'll I, I go to war about Tasha Smith, man. Tasha Smith is a light, a queen, a goddess, an empress, royalty. I, I, there is, the, the, she, oh man, she just has the Midas touch. She has the a Midas beautiful touch. eye. She's so genuine and pure and real and helping and knowledgeable in every aspect. I, I, I love, I adore Tasha Smith in every aspect of the word. Uh, Mr. George Pierre, my dog, man, uh, such an inspiration to, walk through the fires that he's walked through to stand in the shoes that he stands in today and and be able to build the the world he's building for those around him i think i think that's a beautiful thing he's someone i look up to tremendously and i'll cut the list right there because eventually someone's going to catch feelings that i didn't mention them because i forgot because i'm on the spot but those <laughs> are those are some people that i 100 look up to yeah and i would love to work with Giancarlo Esposito. You're pulling the questions out of my head. Who who do you want to work with? I want to work with Giancarlo Esposito. He's my favorite actor. By all means, I want to go on record and say that or not. And I hope God makes that happen because he's someone... I He caught my eye when I was a child watching Fresh. Okay. And, and of course, his monumental role in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. But from school days to Fresh to even his Sesame Street spot. Like Giancarlo Esposito, <laughs> he's such a, a a legend that is slept on. And I think he's an incredible performer that literally always hits the bullseye every single time. And I have to work with him. He's one of the people I really, really hope I get a chance to work with soon. Yeah, we have to put that on the atmosphere. 100%. We're going to add it to the prayer list and the prayer call and the prayer line Amen. and the prayer room. We, we got you prayed to, up. We're going to you gotta be, surround that thing. Got to be prayed up. <laughs> surround that thing. There's no way you're you're giving all of these paths and bringing it to people's rooms. Like, and we don't surround your dreams and what you're trying to do. I hope. I hope. Have to. I, I hope. So stay prayed up on your path, too. It's imperative. Just yeah. stay prayed up while you're on your path. If that's your thing. You know, you know, though I love the Lord and my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. I don't knock what anyone else believes in. So whatever it is you do, do that on your path. Yeah. You mentioned your mentors. Mm -hmm. How did you get to some of those relationships? Like, how, how did you even get access? Was it like you're walking with one of your friends who's looking to be an actor and they're in the room and they're like, hey, bro, are you pulling up? Like, how, what did I, that look like? By walking. And, and no, seriously, metaphorically, me, <laughs> meta, metaphorically, just walking and listening to God, man. Very early on in life, I asked a friend of mine's, my best friend, actually, my right hand, his aunt, who's a very successful person that I know. Genuine question. How do you be successful? <laughs> I want to know how do you visit this? And she's, not, she's, not, she's not in the entertainment industry by any means. She's in corporate America. But I asked her, like, hey, how do you be successful? And she said, people look at success as this big, vague puzzle of just chaos and you, like this huge secret. And it's not. She yeah. said, the way you become successful is you look up someone you admire, find their path, and do what they did. And you'll get close if you don't get the exact same thing. Because if you want it bad enough, you'll you'll go on and 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 do all the things they did. So I just started looking people up that I admire. And I won't like name every single person, but I'll say I landed on Lance Gross, right? Yeah. And this is around 2013. So I landed on Lance Gross. And I'm finding his story, Googling everything you can Google about Lance Gross, trying to figure him out. Like, all right, how did he? And, and I did this for everybody else. So I did Denzel, Aegis, every, yeah. all kinds of stuff. But yeah. I landed on Lance Gross. And I saw that he studied at Tasha Smith's Actors Workshop. And I was like, okay. By all means, I know who Tasha Smith is, but I don't know the magnitude of who she is at this point in my life because I just was in a completely different world. So yeah. I 
find that he studied at her class. So I look up her class. Lo and behold, she had a class coming up in two weeks. A, a weekend workshop. This is, two, this is the summer of 2013. So I'm like, all right, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and I paid for the class and I, and I took the class and it was the best decision I ever made in my life, man. That was summer 2013. I went to her class. I was blown away. I had no idea anything about anything. And one of the prerequisites, not excuse me, not prerequisites, but one of the requirements of the class was to have a monologue prepared to perform. And I didn't know that. And there was, <laughs> I was sitting next to this, this, this queen. Her name is Mikey, Miss Mikey. She was the host of 106 in Park. Oh, yeah. And she was very cool. And wherever you are in the world, Mikey, I hope you're doing amazing. I don't know if you remember me, but you, you were helpful and very nice and very kind. And I'll never forget that. That's and so crazy. No, 100%, man. My sister is my line sister. And you know her? Shout out to Camille. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You know, I was about to say, you know Mikey? Yeah, no, I know Camille. Oh, okay. sister. Oh, really? <laughs> tell Camille to tell yeah. Mikey. Yeah. I, I yo, 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 Mikey. Many blessings. I hope you're doing amazing wherever you are in the world. I haven't seen you since 2000. I have no idea what's going on with you, but I hope you're okay. <laughs> and um, I did a monologue. No, I, <laughs> I looked up a monologue right there on the spot. And what was it? It was the Ferris Bueller's Day Off monologue. <laughs> and I bodied it. I killed it. I did amazing. Mind you, I wasn't really well versed in, in, in acting at that time. Did you read it? I read it. Well, I read, I read the monologue. You were reading. I, I read, yeah, you got to know how to read. That's important. <laughs> So, Most people would think they have to memorize their lines before they start or go. No, so I did that. memorize the monologue. Oh, okay, you got Oh, you mean you meant did I did I read it or yes. while I was oh no, no. I was like, this is Tasha Smith. <laughs> no. I look yo, I looked at the monologue and I was like, doo, doo, doo. she go she picking people out of the crowd, I'm like, oh she's just gonna call me. Okay. Oh, she getting close. <laughs> okay, I got it. You come before. Okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, what do I do? I look, how you want, where you want me to look? <laughs> okay, so I do the monologue and she's laughing hysterically, right? <laughs> and she's like, keep going. Uh, <laughs> ain't no more words, what do you want me to do? <laughs> the, the, the monologue's done and she's like, keep going. And I was like, and I just started pulling stuff randomly. Da, 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 and then she let me off. She was like, all right, come. And she gave me the biggest hug. Laughed and smiled. She like, did amazing. And she let me sit down and everything. And um, that was the first time I met Tasha Smith. And I got tapped on the shoulder by the person assisting her at the time. And she told me to move to Atlanta. And I was like, why? She was like, there's no one out there like you, and you'll stand out. You should go. And I did. I listened. And I just kept seeing little signs from God also that I should be moving to Atlanta. So six months later, I moved to Atlanta. And for everyone else, we, we just don't have the time to explain. But yeah. it essentially, every person, I, I remember our genuine story of, of how we connected. And I would also like to shout out Miss Val, who introduced me to acting in the first place asked me to be in a play while in church and I turned her down countless times. I'm not doing that. No, you play. did not. I did. I had, Val like that. I had no desire she to She should have pinched your arm. She I had, I had no, and twisted it. <laughs> she kept asking me and I, I feel like she had like an angel whisper in her ear or something mm -hmm. and, and because she wouldn't stop asking me and I eventually said, okay. And here we are today. I All fell right. in love with it right there. That first play I ever did, I fell in love with it and I never looked back. So I was like, there's a space for you in this entertainment industry. There was a space carved out for you and you got welcomed with open arms. I say that to say like, because a lot of people think like once you meet a person, oh, we connected, that's what, wait, you see the Instagram, we working. No, <laughs> go put in your own work by yourself. No one is here to hold your hand through this. No one, no one's gonna hold your hand unless you're giving them an enormous sum of money. And even then their time and their, their mental peace still might not be worth it. Take the gems that you're given and the environments in which you're giving them and you go harvest and you go build and you go create and you go hone your craft and you go get amazing at what it is you say you do. And then organically your paths will either align or you'll create an opportunity just by working that will make sense to the overall picture. Like don't, 
I, please don't ask for handouts. Please don't ask for people to hold your hand. Put your own work in, and eventually the blessings will come. Yeah. yeah. Were there times on your path where maybe you're like, hey, I don't have the funds for this class, or yeah. I don't know, <laughs> how, do, how do I get in this class, right? It's only recommender only, or mm -hmm. invite only. Mm -hmm. How did you kind of navigate those spaces? You see this face? <laughs> <laughs> okay, question answer. No, 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 no. So, <laughs> you honestly, it's like this. It's it's an exchange of of what do you need versus what do I need. It's bartering at its core. It's, yeah. For example, when I got to Atlanta, I did an acting class and I paid for the first month, and the price was expensive. I was like, hey. I can't afford the next month, so. But the teacher loved my work so much Ooh. that he said, well, I don't, I'm sorry. I, don't, I want you in class, but I don't know what you're doing. I found a problem and I became the solution. I noticed that his social media was in disarray. Oh, wow. And I said, hey, let me handle your social media accounts in exchange for class. And that's how I began, and I was able to attend class for free, for, for service, for bartering service. There was yeah. no financial exchange, but I took care of all the social medias while he allowed me to take classes, which sharpened my tool 100%. And, you know, that was, that was a life lesson, and I would, I would abhor anyone who doesn't have the funds to offer your skill to someone that you need something from in order to balance out the scale. Yeah. yeah, that level of servitude. Like people are not even thinking about that most times. Yeah. It's like, hey, I asked nicely. Or I said, please. So? Or I'm like, help me. Don't care. And, and to approach somebody. <laughs> Nobody cares. People got bills. I agree. And help and me. Something. You have to do something unless they genuinely love you already and they'll do something for nothing. Yeah. But other than that, and also, no, like, no one owes you anything. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. Yeah. You know, take the information and, and figure it out. As kind as we try to be and as helpful we try to be, which people will try to take advantage. Yeah. Or, or people will honestly just be lazy. And it's like, no, you still have to work hard. By no means is this easy. Yeah. But if you truly want it, then it won't feel like work. Yeah. Yeah. It'll just feel like you are chasing another level of yourself or trying to find yourself. feel like you're dwelling in your purpose. Yeah. Mm. What's one thing that you want people to walk away from past feeling or knowing? It's like, possible. It's possible. Knowing that they can do it if they put the hard work in and, and take information and apply it. Don't just look at it or don't just think anything is supposed to fall on your lap. Like, no, yeah. it's possible. This is how I did it. This is how you did it. This is how he did it. This is how she did it. This is how she did it. Now, okay, I'm going to pick the person I like the most and start out by doing what they did. Yeah. And then eventually things will just happen and occur that were meant for me. But I started and I walked with it. So, But the most important, the core of it, because a lot of people will think or see people on television yeah. And, oh, that's impossible, I can't, no, it's, it's possible. It's very possible. Yeah. You just have to know where to look and you have to know where to be and, and the proper steps to take. And the other thing, very important thing I want people to know is that acting isn't the only job in Hollywood. That That's something, Dang. acting is not <laughs> the only job in Hollywood. That That's something I really want people to know. There's countless other people that make a living in Hollywood doing things that you probably don't even know exist. There's yeah. a, there's a, you see two people on screen, like literally right now there's two people on this screen, but there's a team of people behind these cameras making sure everything is on point. And that team behind these cameras are vital to Hollywood. So after they watched this interview, mm -hmm. I know we talked about practical steps. Mm -hmm. Like literally when they, when this video ends mm -hmm. or takes a pause, right? Cause we know there are more videos right. of you. <laughs> 
Of course. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to watch your face? Seen All space? over that TV. Like, it just makes sense. <laughs> After they leave this video, what are the three steps, practical steps? Like, hey, I need you to go sign up for this, right. apply here, mm -hmm. and attend this workshop. Like, <clears throat> what, are, what are those three next steps for them? First thing is training. Get in an acting class, but don't just... Everybody can say they're an acting teacher. Research these people. Do some due diligence. See who studied there. How's their career doing? Who studied there? How, how their career is doing? Okay, things to consider when do, looking at a... When looking at an acting class, okay. right? Who is this acting coach work with? Does that actor that you might admire still train at the same place they once mm. trained? Gotcha. These are, these are things you should consider, like, before giving your hard-earned money, time, or service... <laughs> to an acting school. No, genuinely, like, or is, is this someone you can trust? Because there are a lot of scams out there. That's one. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I would say is get a headshot. Get a professional headshot. After you're training for a while and you feel like you're ready to begin auditioning, yeah. get a professional headshot. And again, do your due diligence. <laughs> Who headshots? People will headshots. happily take him. Yeah, I'll take headshot. What you need? Give me 500. You know what I mean? Give me 500. Boom, headshot. Give me my eye. Right. No. What's the like, you be asking your photographer, like, or confirming? No, it's more a research thing. Okay. It's more research. And then referrals are the golden ticket in this business. Who, you okay. have someone I trust and I like their headshots. All right, I'm going to go to where this person shot so I can look like that to get. And mm. then the last thing I would say is attend workshops on top of classes when you're not being seen by who you'd like to be seen by, whether that be an agent or a casting director to get into the door. Like, find a workshop of someone you want. Like, if it's a casting director you're trying to get in front of and you just can't find a workshop, then get in front of them and perform for them. I'm here, I'm gonna <laughs> perform for you. You've done that? Absolutely, that's how I got my first agent. Stop that. I did a workshop and got him. That's how I got in front of George Pierre for the first time. I did a workshop, got in front of him. Go get it, it's yours. The world yours and everything in it. <laughs> You gonna go get it? <laughs> there you all have it. This is literally Christian Robinson, mm. the inspiration, the mm. creator, the innovator, the, mm. the door opener for other people to find their path. Child of God. You heard it That's first. You heard it directly through his mouth. And a child of God. <laughs> if you didn't know, a child of God. You heard it first right from him. Blessed and honored to even just be in your presence. To be in your presence. I ain't gonna have me all emotional on you the stage I mean? like this. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in to Paths and season one. We cannot wait to see you here back at Paths again. And we hope you were truly blessed. So do those next steps. You got it first, right here from Christian Robinson. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>